All right, joining us in studio is Andre Weir. We've got the band together, yeah, broadcast team, and yep. with uh, many weeks to go still until training camp, but uh, we're closing in on it. We thought we'd get together and just shoot the breeze about some Texans topics, things going on. And Dre tried to replace me with AI play-by-play. <laughs> well, he comes in here, and he's got his phone on some yeah. game. I'm, I'm scouting a potential, uh, uh, not AAU, but select team for my right. son. So they're, on their, they're in their World Series down in Myrtle Beach, Florida. So that's what you were hearing. All right, so it's like Siri doing play-by-play. Yeah, yeah Strike pretty much. And two. it's not bad. It's not bad in the car. Uh, they <clears throat> pipe in a little bit of crowd noise, so mm -hmm. it kind of gives it a game time, f game like feel. But you're right; it does sound a lot like Siri. It's yeah, it's like Siri calling a game. Yeah, yeah. First and ten. <laughs> <laughs> C.J. Stroud hands off to Joe Mixon. Who knows with AI, man? I know, <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's all right. Let's well, make the most of it while we can. Yeah, exactly I mean, remember? Right. I mean, remember we had that game in COVID in 2020, yeah. where we were all in different locations. Yeah. yeah. And that would have been a perfect opportunity for the uh, the AI play by play to come mm -hmm. in. Well, the scary thing is AI using our voices yes. and doing the game. Yeah, and, and you don't, be and there. you can't yes. tell the difference. Yeah, rock and roll. And we probably signed something that says that's allowed. Put those jerseys <laughs> back Somewhere in the some trunk. <laughs> Put those jerseys. Back. There you go. I don't know that. I don't there know AI would have, I don't know AI would have been able to capture the emotion of that. Do you, I mean. Do you remember saying that? I mean, yeah, I that just I well, mean, it it was that it was just kind of off the hip at that point, but I do remember saying yeah. it now that you know it got so much airplay. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that was just raw emotion. I yeah. mean, it was just the the game was over at that point. We'd hung one, uh, hung another W, and and uh, man, it was just let them rip. All right, so do you think that's the most emotional you've been throughout the course of a season? Because I like that. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. you it adding was, that. I can I can honestly tell you, it was the most. Uh, fun and emotional that I've had for an entire season. Okay, there's no doubt about yeah. it. It, it. That was the most enjoyable season. And what was there? Ten, ten wins, seven losses wins. in that year. Yeah. Uh, we've certainly had better seasons, mm -hmm. but not as much fun as that one. And I guess you could throw in because of who it was, the attachment to uh, <clears throat> having played for the team with D'Amico now mm -hmm. being the head coach, a lot of stuff swirling, C.J. coming in as a rookie quarterback and having, you know, an unprecedented season. Uh, it was great. And then you throw in Tank Dell for the better part of the first half of the season, uh, being a U of H guy, coming in and lighting it up the way he was. Instant fan. Always was, but even more so now. Trey, one of the things that we, we talked to Case about, and I asked him about that game, one of the things that he said, and I thought it was interesting, and I want to get your thoughts and your mm -hmm. opinions on this. He said he didn't at the time, in the moment, kind of get or understand or feel the emotion. But as he's kind of been removed from it, more people have talked to him about that particular game, and he's realizing how much that game meant to Houstonians. Mm -hmm. uh, getting that win, and they're wearing <laughs> the old Oilers junior uniforms, yeah. and they're doing it against them, and it's obviously a big game for the Texans. But he said he got more people talking to him about that game than a lot of other things that have happened in his career. Yeah, he. Uh, I got a chance to visit with him at the golf tournament, and then we were on campus together a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> and he talked about that. And he talked about his whole 13-year career yeah. uh, pretty much, but that was a special game in part because of what it meant to obviously the fans here in Houston, the owners of this team. Mm -hmm. uh, it means, means a whole lot to them. And then, the, you know, the whole color thing, and they're going to yep. wear it when the Texans come to town. And what better way to just shove it right down your throat than uh, than a W? Yep. Yeah, and that was just one game in a season to remember with yeah. so many great moments. Yeah. And, and we'll get into some of that. But How about the 75-yard touchdown? Where's that, Indianapolis? That, yeah. That Ooh, led the game the off game. to Nico. Ka I mean, we've, ne we've never experienced anything like yeah. that. Just the Usually it's, hey, let's not make a mistake, try to get some first downs, open the drive. <laughs> no, we're going for the jugular right now. And yeah. it, and it was good. You I mean, love it was that. Good. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love that that brand of football. Uh, I like that type of aggression offensively, where you're dictating the pace, and they've got to ke play catch up. Yeah. I love that brand. Trey, I think what was great about that, Mark and I had a chance to talk to Nico, and I think that was the first time we had had a chance to talk to Nico since the end of the season and since that game. And so I said, Nico, I've been dying to ask you this: When did you know 
that was going to be play number one. He goes, Wednesday? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, that. <laughs> yeah. And they knew right away. The and only- I was like, okay, what, like during the play, when you know it's coming to you, he goes, I mean, right when I lined up. Yeah. It's like it lined up perfectly for exactly what they wanted to do. But on Wednesday, they had it planned. You, they were you, taking that you, shot. You've coached. You, uh, you go through uh, certain situations where you have a plan in mm-hmm. place yep. and you want this certain look. And if you don't get it, you're like, ah, oh, I got to go to something else. But when you get it, get you're it. just sitting there like, oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember back when we were playing Texas at U of H, <clears throat> and we put in this play where I was going to catch a pass. It's my favorite oh. play of college football uh, with me involved in it. And um, it was going to be the se- first play out of the half no matter what. Okay. And, you know, with the run and shoot, you can adjust for man versus zone versus, you know, blitz mm-hmm. and certain so on and so forth. And so we had an answer for everything they were going to do, but we were hoping it was man, so it would create a natural pick with me going up the sideline, and it did. It just set up perfectly. All week long, I dropped that pass. Not that day in the game. <laughs> all week long, I you came, did. Yeah, all week long, and that play went in on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. So oh. it was uh, it was one of those Who where threw it. Klingler snuck okay. him in as the uh, running oh. back, and it was oh. a direct snap to him as I went up the sideline. The outside receiver went up the hash like a switch combination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, he just laid it right on the money, right over the shoulder. Oh, that must have been so sweet oh, at the sweet. 48 And it was Texas, yeah. And oh. I was, this one was in the dome, but it was just it was sweet okay. nonetheless. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, nothing wrong with that. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, we mentioned Case. He connected with Stephon Diggs once upon a time for the greatest play in the history of the Vikings franchise, yeah. a team that the Texans will play this year. What about Diggs on this team, Dre, with Nico, with Tank, with all the weapons they have? How do you think it works out? I think it works tremendously. And then they've got the seven one three back together yeah. with Diggs mm-hmm. and uh, or CJ Diggs and and now uh, um, Tank, Tank, Tank Tank back and healthy. So it's good to see that that part of it. But he is uh, he is a route runner extraordinaire. He makes breaks and cuts that you just don't see. Uh, it, it's it's crazy. The hands are there. He's a vet. He knows how to take care of himself. And then to help out a locker room and be a leader to some younger guys uh, at that position as well. So it's uh, it's it's been great. They've hit the ground running with it. Uh, I thought during um, this past was it mini camp OTAs, whatever yeah. it was, that the defense was a little bit ahead of the offense. But that's 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 usually that way this time mm-hmm. of year because they are just seek and destroy and all the components, the chemistry has to come together offensively. Now, they're not far off, mm-hmm. but uh, I thought the defense was a little bit ahead. And with all the upgrades, that's kind of where you would, would prefer to have it at this point. Trey, what does continuity mean to C.J. Stroud? Bobby Sloat comes back. <laughs> Josh Johnson comes back. Bill Lazor comes back. All of his receivers come back. And then you bring in Diggs. Dalton Schultz decides to re-sign here. It seems like the the ecosphere of C.J. Stroud, that all pretty much stayed the same from what it was last year. How much do you think that matters for C.J. going into year two? I think it matters a, a, a ton. And then when you throw in the uh, the offensive line yeah. and them having chemistry up front, Juice going back to his natural position of center, mm-hmm. uh, Shaq back in the fold at right guard, and then Titus healthy at right tackle. Laramie back at left tackle, and then Kenyon Green, who they are expecting some a bounce back season from after an injury riddled season last year. Uh, I think that that coupled with CJ and the weapons that you've put around him, yeah. oh my goodness, sky's the limit. And yeah. so the more reps they get, the better uh, they're going to become. You just hope that it's uh, enough time between now and the first preseason game or the first or the opening season game throughout the preseason. I think it's going to give them some help as well throw in an extra preseason game in there in the Hall of Fame game, and uh, and, and I think they hit the ground running uh, in September early. More on the players in a moment, Dre, but what about the psychology of it, all these expectations on them now? A lot of people think this yeah. team's going to be very good. They're getting a lot of praise, off-season <laughs> praise. You know, Nick Saban talks about the rat poison. Rat poison. Whatever. What do you make of that and how they handle that as a younger team? But they do have some vets and they have D'Amico. I, I think they, they've handled it well. When you, you they, they continue to utter the words that we're a young team and we just have to get better and so on yeah. and so forth. I think, you know, there there were wins last year that could have gone either way mm-hmm. and it, it balances itself during a season like that. Right. But they're the hunted now because of a division championship, uh, going deep into the playoffs, 
uh, the amount of press that they've gotten with a young quarterback who is uh, on everybody's list is one of the best in the uh, – it's certainly top ten in this league right now. Um, that they, they, they have to bring it every single week because they're going to be somebody's uh, bulletin board material every single week in the NFL. And so it will be a season of one week at a time, and it should be most parts, but certainly this one because you have to take it that way. There were a lot of injuries last year, and they were able to to kind of weave their way through that. Hopefully they can stay a little bit healthier this year and make it a little bit easier. Mike Tomlin says it's a five-star <clears throat> matchup because we're in it, and I feel like that's the way that – you know, yeah, it's not it's not a five star matchup because it's the Bills over there. Correct. It's five star matchup because we're in it. Who I think is going to be severely uh, weakened this year because of obviously you can't lose Diggs and still be the same right. offense. Buffalo, yeah. And they've lost some pieces on yep. defense. Oh, as yeah. well. Secondary. So, oh, no, my God. totally, totally. Different. Marcus, uh, I know how Mark feels about this. I know mm-hmm. how I feel about it. Week one at Indy. How do you feel about it? Uh, I'd rather have somebody else, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to turn down. Um, uh, what is it? The 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 uh, prime forty seven steakhouse. Yes, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah, turn yeah, that yeah. down. The first week, first rattle out of the box. Yeah, and then yeah. We could actually probably walk to the restaurant and you know yeah. uh, downtown a little bit mm. because the weather's going to be. Uh, ideal at that point in the season where usually we go there is later in the year and we're all mm-hmm. bundled up. Yep. Yep. But uh, that just means it's going to be somewhere though. else cold. That's us. Uh, what about at, them? At that date <laughs> later in the year. But no, I, I like it because it's going to test Indianapolis. I don't want uh, Anthony Richardson to get a boatload of games under his belt before we have to see him. I'd rather see him early and it'd be a division game than later in the season where he, he's got some rhythm yep. to his game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Primetime games. Did you like them? The players say they like them. Now, everybody loves routine, but if you're in a primetime game, like you guys said, mm-hmm. I mean, that means you're in the all-star It takes matchup. you out of your, out of your routine for sure. I didn't like them for that reason because I'm very routine oriented and mm-hmm. I just, I just like the same thing at the same time, the same meal, whatever yeah. it is. And, um, I hated waiting for games. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to wake up, get dressed, go play. Yeah. And uh, when you're in a primetime game, you are sitting all day long trying to to wind, you know, wind that clock or f- have the clock go a little bit faster yeah. so you can get to get closer to game time. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have to play, and they are the ones that that have to adjust to it. Uh, as a broadcaster, I like. I still like the routine though. I wake up, call a game. Let's go oh, get on the yeah, plane. We and all go do. Home. I mean, yeah. we were the epitome of routine <clears throat> last year. Every yep. game at noon. Yep. Yeah. Noon. I mean, obviously, if we're at Eastern time, it's one o'clock. But well, until every Indy, game. and that until was Indy. sitting around the hotel waiting, like, and okay, how's Saturday. this going to go? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's on a Saturday, so I mean, we hadn't had any, I don't want to say disruption, but we didn't, we didn't have any disruption. And usually, if schedule. it's a, if it's a a late game, let's say on a on a Sunday, you get a Sunday nighter. You're still going at the same time on Saturday, pretty much. Maybe a little oh, couple yeah. of hours no, later. Yeah, right. yeah. So you got to occupy time. that time with with yeah. something to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But you Which, watch NFL football during the day. Though. Yeah, yeah you that's can. Very, that, that's true. Or college games on Saturday too. Um, which which opposing quarterbacks? I mean, there's obviously Patrick Mahomes. There's uh, Lamar Jackson. I mean, this is a this is a pretty stout quarterback schedule. The running backs, wide receivers, Mark and I have gone through. But I know one of the things that I look forward to, Dre, is seeing, you know, the opponents of, you know, who we're going to play. And, oh, man, I'm get, we're getting to see this guy. We're getting to see this guy. Jordan Love, Dak Prescott, Jared Goff. There are a lot of quarterbacks that we're going to face this year that people have heard of. They've gone to Pro Bowls. Is there one any more you're excited about than seeing the Texans' defense go against than any other? Yeah. And it's not a veteran guy. It's a rookie. Rookie. Caleb Williams. Okay, week we two, do, baby. Yeah, that, that's who. That's yeah. who I want to see uh, as as bad as anybody. Because uh, I told you there was a, a a point in the season last year where I got to the hotel. We were on the road. I think it was in consecutive weeks, and I just locked in on him. I just wanted to see him play. So I sat down and watched an entire USC yeah. game, um, and he is unbelievable. And it, it, you could get this close to him. Or as close as Johnny yeah. and I are sitting, we are seats apart, <clears throat> one seat apart, and can't touch him. Yep. And so it's going to be a tall order for our defense. And, and mm-hmm. just the pieces that they kind of put around him, can they protect him? They've certainly upgraded the skill positions around him. 
Now can they protect him enough that we, where he can be successful? And I hope not in week two, but that's a game I'm looking to see because he is a guy I would spend money to go watch play football. He's that dynamic. Yep. What about the stretch where you have three games in 11 days or whatever it is? Is it 10 days, Johnny, or 11 days when you have the Chiefs on the 21st, mm -hmm. the 25th Christmas, yep. you are going to entertain the Baltimore Ravens. But before that, you had the Miami Dolphins yeah. before the Chiefs yeah. games. You have six days, <clears throat> short 15th, week. 15th and, to the 25th. So yeah. Luckily for us, two of, two of the three are home. And so you get the Dolphins here. You get yeah. the Chiefs on the road, which is always going to be a tough game. And then the Ravens come here again. They start. They We opened the season with the Ravens last year here, yes, right? Yes, we did. Uh, yeah. There. Yeah. there. Opened it was there. and ended. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, Johnny. Yeah. And so they're making a trip, uh, th 3.30 kick <clears throat> here at NRG. Yeah. Four That'll day be a week. great game. Four-day week. So it's pretty tight. Pretty tight stuff. So speaking of the Chiefs, you go up there and – are they the new Patriots for sure? When you oh, look definitely. At, because they've really revamped that team. What was it, the amount of starters they had versus opening day of 2020 when we faced them Oh, up yeah, there? we faced them in 2020. Like four I mean, starters yeah. or something? Offensively, they've got like three guys left. I, that's amazing. Mahomes, and then, Kelsey, and maybe one other. I can't remember. And everybody always talks about Mahomes for good reason. They were the number two defense in the league last year. Yeah. Points and yards. They just it, it's, it just shows you when you have the brain trust upstairs that are they're on the same page they know what to look for. And when you allow staffs to kind of stay uh, in place for a number of years, uh, there's some cohesiveness that they know what, what they're going to the grocery short store to shop for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's speed in Kansas City on the offensive side and then playmakers on the defensive side. And, and so when you look at what they've been able to do just this offseason and adding more weapons to an already lethal offensive attack, that's where they're scary. Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, you mentioned it, Xavier Worthy and Hollywood yeah. Brown. Yeah, in the same it's crazy. Office. I mean, who knows what happens with Rasheed Rice? I mean, we we have no idea. That's what's gonna every happen bit with that. the equivalent, in my opinion, of of uh, Diggs coming to the Texans and, and being a big cog in and what's what's here already. Really, getting that that young speed and then Hollywood. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it gives Mahomes. And then you and you've got Mahomes pulling the trigger with Kelsey to yep. pull coverage down where they can get over the top. It's that's going to be sick. I would have. I mean, Dre, you played the position, so you know quarterbacks like to throw deep, especially when they've got an arm like Mahomes. And for the first few years of Mahomes' career, it was bleep it. Tyreek's down there somewhere. So yeah. just throw it. Just let, let, him let have it go. It. And now he's got two guys that can be that. Hey, I know they're going to be down there. I just got to. I got to flip and throw it yeah. so i think you're right though the defense is not talked about in kansas city which is uh which is a shame but the texans have beaten mahomes before 2019 at Arrowhead. it's happened we've beaten the man we've not beaten lamar jackson the other guy and now we gotta play him on christmas i i mean we saw it in the playoff game he was not playing well the offense was not playing well in the second half he got it going with some scrambles and some runs my god how do we beat lamar jackson dre um, <laughs> with, oh, excuse me. That's a good question. How do we beat Lamar Jackson with Derrick Henry lining up behind him? Oh gosh, yeah, that I just part. made that clue. <laughs> that 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 part. I know that part. And they were already. I mean, they were tough. How many times they run the ball against us the week? That oh, week? second half, it was it was crazy. In the playoffs, and then they yeah, went man. to Kansas City. The what? The previous week? The next week? The next yeah. week, AFC. And, they and, and didn't run it and very much running. at all. Didn't run yeah. it I think all. they ran it forty-two times against us. Yeah. In the 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 uh, game, in that game when we were there, and uh, and not not much in the first half relatively no. because that's when the and Texans they went were run heavy. Stops. They were like, wait a minute, this isn't us. Let's get to back to what we do. Right. And then they go the next week and decide to throw it around, and I think that cost them the game. With Derrick Henry, uh, he is going to demand it. Uh, I was watching last week just a training real or some oh, video gosh. of him in the gym training and oh, it's no. just it, his 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 regimen is just sick man you you there's no accident as to how he p continues to put up the numbers that he's doing because he works so hard in the offseason you're yeah. right 42 for 229 yeah yeah in the playoff game in the playoff game lamar had mm. 11 for 100 Justice Hill had 13 for 66 Gus Edwards had 8 for uh, 10 for 40 and even Dalvin Cook had eight for twenty three. They ran forty two times. Now I don't know how the split was, in, you know, by half. I wonder how they stack times. up running back wise in terms of the their depth chart with Henry, Henry there now because I don't think they brought Gus Edwards back. No, Gus Edwards went to the Chargers. So 
It's going to be Derrick Henry and, and well, the guy we didn't see because we didn't see him in week one. And then in about the middle of the season, he started showing Dobbins. off and he got hurt. It's Keaton Mitchell. Look, no, Dobbins yeah. isn't there either. He's no, Dobbins, not there no. either, right? Yeah, Dobbins they still have Justice else. Hill, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Justice Hill. They, like, they really like Keaton him. Mitchell. Yeah. That dude can absolutely fly. And he was giving them something in the middle of the year, but then he got hurt in late November, early December. They they missed him. I think had he had him, they would have got him the ball against Kansas City. That would have been tough against Kansas City. But you got to knock him out. Yeah. I mean, that's what you have to do with the Chiefs. And I think that's what we got to do with Lamar. We got, Not physically knock him out of the game. But, I mean, All right, you got to go Williams. up and you got to knock them out. <laughs> All right, Johnny, Greg Williams. Put, Johnny put up a bounty <laughs> yeah. on Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Greg Williams. He's, <laughs> he's not Greg Williams in here. Bounty right, gate. Let's Houston talk style. about the fun stuff. Never mind those teams. The important stuff. The AFC South. We mentioned yeah. the Colts. Now, what about the Jaguars, guys? I know I kind of poke fun at the Trevor Lawrence lack of being a generational guy. We right know now. that you respect Trevor. We know. <laughs> I do. We know. Uh, he's a good quarterback. You can't help but. He, no, he's he, earned it. He's made plays. He has winning seasons. He does all of that. He hasn't gone to the level that they were hoping as the number one overall pick. All that aside, what about the Jaguars? Because they still have ETN, which I think mm-hmm. I think ETN is just as important as Trevor Lawrence to that yeah. offense. I mean, he really helps them go. And I'm concerned about them because no one else seems to be. Yeah, and he's getting better. And the more they <clears throat> put guys around him, the offensive line in terms of being uh, healthy, uh, that's what's concerning is is when they, they're right up front, they can expose you with all the weapons that yep. they have, the ETNs that you talked about. Even even Trevor pulling it down and being able to make some plays with his legs because he hadn't been healthy enough <clears throat> to do that or show that part of his game as of late because he's dealing with injuries. But I think if he, you know early in the season you see him, he's going to have that part of his game. And so that's what makes him dangerous. The defense, uh, they're, they're always going to be tough on that side of the football. And they're, they're – uh, the coaching staff knows what they're doing. They're competent now. We yeah. li- loved it when they weren't. Right, yeah. uh, not so much when when Doug Peterson's there and he's got everybody aligned and 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 focused on what they need to do. I think too many people are looking at them like they're the old. I, I think they're the second best team in the division. Oh, re- really? Better re- than Indy? Yes, I think okay. they're better than Indy. Uh, I think they are behind the Texans and in front of uh, Tennessee, obviously, because mm-hmm. just too many changes have gone on in that building. How yeah. much? Would you, if you're an Indy fan or just just how you're looking at the Colts, how much do you trust Anthony Richardson's playing 15 games or more? Well, that's, that's, that's the part I'm, I'm, uh, you concern yourself with if you're a Colts fan is how fast do they get out of the gate? And he's missed a significant amount of time. Mm -hmm. Obviously they're going to try to ramp him up and get, get reps and, and get him under center. So he's ready to go for the regular season, but there's a risk in doing that too. Uh, I don't think he plays real well but maybe well enough but when you start stacking teams like the Texans early in in the season against him Mm -hmm. that's a tough ask for him and being a young quarterback that was hurt in his rookie year yeah and last year when Richardson got hurt they had Minshew he played well they had nine victories they would have could have should have against the Texans they weren't able to do it and this year they have Joe Flacco behind Anthony Mm -hmm. Richardson and Flacco did remarkably well with Cleveland down the stretch, but can you expect that at his age? Parlayed it, huh? Yeah. I was wondering. Sure I had no it. idea where he'd went, where he'd gone, and, and uh, now you just broke that to me. Well, you That's knew crazy. he wasn't staying in Cleveland, right. which is an interesting situation. Yeah. Well, they needed it because I don't think they could have gone into a, a season with Sam Ellinger as their backup right, right. and expected to have, you know, a long run of games where they're they're winning. But uh, Flacco certainly gives them that veteran presence that they can he can hold it together if, if, he if need be. If they need him to play and he doesn't play well, <clears throat> they could literally be saying, if only we had Gardner Minshew. Yeah. And that's a sentence that not too many people wow. thought would come out of a team's mouth wow. like a year Is and a half ago. Is he the starter in uh, Vegas? Is he, well, Aiden or is he competing? O'Connell. Yeah. They, yeah I mean, and I know they like with. Aiden O'Connell a lot. Yeah, yeah. they do. He'll compete, though. AP loves Aiden O'Connell. Mitchell yeah. will be ready. You know yeah. he's always ready. I mean, Pierce wanted Jaden Daniels, which, I mean, they, he coached him at and recruited him, you know, uh, out of California to go to Arizona State when Pierce yeah. was at Arizona State. Oh, I remember Daniels going there a couple of years ago yeah. when, when Jaden was a freshman and uh, how AP, who was going against him in practice every day, yeah. spoke glowingly yeah. of him and, and how much, you know, how – good of a player he was going to be not just that year but yeah. for years to come raiders just and, couldn't do it couldn't yeah. get up there yeah. so they're stuck with o'connell and Minshew, and 
But they got some talent. I mean, they went out. It wasn't for their lack of trying. They tried to They they were trying to get to him. That would have been interesting. The other quarterback in the division, the polarizing Will Levis. I mean, we talked about it during the broadcast during the game. Like, you know what you're getting with Will Levis because there's going to be a great throw. There's going to be something he does where you go, oh, my God, he's maybe the only quarterback in the league that can do that. Hmm. And then the very next throw, he's going to go, he's going to make a throw where you go, what the absolute F is he doing? And I think until that changes, I just can't buy the Tennessee Titans being more than a six or seven win team. Dre, your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I, I agree Titans? totally with you because there's not a whole lot <clears throat> around him uh, to where to stop him from trying to do too much to protect him from himself yeah. is is the term I like to use. Uh, I think he's going to try to make plays. I think he's going to try to do too much. And and early in the season, he will have you know the turnover bug because of it and so i I don't i think tennessee is is the the fourth team in this division and it's not even close it remains to be seen whether they made the right decision if there was any kind of division between Rand carthon and mike vrabel Mm -hmm. if they made the right decision because i don't know how you guys feel but when the texans take on the titans i'm worried about vrabel as much as anything Mm -hmm. because he's a good coach and now i'm not to take away from brian callahan hasn't done anything yet but that x factor feels like it's gone and we'll see if he's able to develop it again as, oh, that coaching mm-hmm. staff is on the money. But with Vrabel, he always felt like he was going to have a good game plan for you. I know the Texans had success in recent years, but they've also had some trouble in recent years with the Titans. And I know it wasn't going well overall for Vrabel, but I think they screwed up the roster around you know the talent he had to work with. And once they got rid of Robinson, and I'll, I'll always say this, I know Robinson traded A.J. Brown, unpopular, all of that. But Robinson never had a losing season there as the general manager. Yeah. Even that was with a head previous- scratcher to let him go. You know, and you see what Pittsburgh just did with their head coach, and, and it's not easy to duplicate. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that you know he obviously knows what he's looking for. Then you look what they were able to put together this off season. They kept Hop there. Traylon yep. Burks is still in the fold. Calvin Ridley comes aboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, it was signed from Cincinnati. They got weapons. So they've got some weapons. Got weapons. If they if they can get some consistent quarterback play from Levis, they could be a thorn in some team side. But they do not have twenty two. He is no. gone. He's in yeah. Baltimore. No. Tony Thank Pollard God. is uh, now the the lead yeah. back there, along with Ty J Spears, who I it'll be really a, really like. It'll yeah. be a good duo. It doesn't scare you. Like Justice Hill is there. Ty J Spears, so yeah. to speak. What but in, in Baltimore? In Baltimore. Yeah. That's that that kind of dynamic with Henry. You've got he's obviously the thunder, mm-hmm. and you're gonna have a lightning to kind of offset him. And Johnny's right though. Derrick Henry strikes fear in the opponent. Yeah. Oh, there's Defensive no doubt. Defensive coordinators have to Because he really... just he's every bit better in the fourth quarter than he was in yeah. the first quarter. Yeah. Because of those workouts you talked about. Yep. I mean we've the seen chains it. all around his neck as he's doing push ups <laughs> like my God, stop. Neck curls. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> with chains on. And he dies. Dominated us game after game for you remember a that string he had when he was like over 200, 200 yards against for us. like five straight games or something it was crazy I mean, but me being down there to watch every single one of those like do we have anybody that's going to tackle this guy and i mean all it took not a lot of people around the league are signing up for that the game yeah. in 2020 it just took one linebacker step out of the gap and that dude took it 94 yards to the house like i mean what that's the scary part is not only is he powerful he's fast yeah. with it so uh, if you give him a our guys step, are him you're not going to get him. And, and think about it. Even if you catch up to him, how hard is it to get him down yeah, yeah, when yeah. he's moving at full speed? Yeah, absolutely. He's going to go for he a ride. He might stiff arm you on, on the way. He might wait for you. He's done that to many. And stiff arm you <laughs> as you go. So I'm glad he's in Baltimore. No All doubt. All right, so uh, December, 31st, December 31st, the Texas Bowl will be played here at NRG Stadium. Not too far from SEC where we're sitting SEC Big right 12 now. still? Yes. Yes, and obviously there's a playoff this year, but a uh, few. How items. good is the Big Twelve going to be, though? I mean, uh, that's that's a that's a good conference. Utah stepping in, Colorado mm-hmm. stepping in, the two Arizona schools, Arizona, Arizona Ooh. State. Let me tell you, Arizona in. is pretty good. Yes, they are, that and I, I would love to have seen Jed stay there yeah, and not go to Washington with this roster. Oh my goodness! I think that Arizona is good. I think Jed <laughs> Jed built that thing up. He did a great job. With this offense, with Noah Fafita at quarterback, who played in high school with Territorial McMillan, who the was two backs they had, but I think one left, right? One of the backs graduated, was from Strake, Michael Wiley. Uh, but they've got talent. They got a stud offensive lineman. I don't think the defense is great, but they've got a top notch corner. Arizona's going to be really good. Those those corner schools from the Pac twelve coming in, 
Man, my goodness. My surprise team well, in the Big 12 is Iowa State. Said all, you say teams. all that to say that the Texas Bowl is in good hands yep. with that yeah, matchup absolutely. with the Big 12 and the SEC U of H in its second year mm-hmm. uh, under Coach Fritz. Looking for, so forward to uh, to his his stepping into that that seat and that role. And then, you know, just across the board, Iowa State that you mentioned. Baylor, I think, is set for a bounce back year. It, it's going to be a heck of a year. That's good stuff. Yeah. Okay, something's going to happen that should have been happening all along, but it wasn't, and that's UT will take on A&M because they should have been Is that around Thanksgiving? Did they give it that that home? weekend, yeah. That's good. It it needed to be there. Uh, Too many things from a tradition standpoint have been exiting Mm -hmm. uh, football stages left and right, not only the NFL but in college as well. It's good to see that reunion happen again and in its proper place around Thanksgiving. Because my son is going to the University of Texas, do I have to root for the Longhorns? You okay with this? I'm all right with that. I mean, I love Luke like a son, so Uh, I'm all right. He made a wise choice. Yeah. I mean, it's about the academics. That's exactly right. (laughs) No, seriously, because to him, and he's a big sports fan, but to him it was almost, oh, yeah, they're good at football. Yeah, but I I think he's going to fit just fine. Okay. In terms from it's an be, athletic standpoint, it'll I mean, be disconcerting seeing him wearing Texas gear the first time. I've, I've seen it already. Yeah, oh that's that's, already. that's, it's that's very when strange. it's like, whoa. I don't know which jarring. bugs me more: the burgundy of A and M or the burnt orange of Texas. <laughs> and you tolerate either one. Well, he went to a thing at A and M, and he got in there too, which was nice. But he wanted UT. He wanted to go yeah. there, and it, it had nothing to do with the athletic program. Rightfully so, for, because he's got to he's got to have a life after college. Yeah. And what better place to go if you're going to live in this state? I mean, than Austin. There. There's no trouble you can get into in Austin, no. right? No, it'd be total. Not, it'd be not Luke, I, that's the last thing I worry about. Is Luke Vanden so getting I into trouble? I ask both y'all this. We're talking about college football. There's been so much change recently. Going to a 12 team playoff. The SEC has grown. The Big Ten has grown. The Pac-12 has died. If you could make one change to college football in any way, shape, or form, a rule, something you like to see, what would you what would you change? Transfer portal. But what Eliminate would you do? No, what would I do? I would if if you get a one time transfer, if I'm the commissioner of the NCAA or yeah. whatever the title is, yeah. you get a one time transfer. If you're a coach and you only get that transfer if the coach that you signed mm-hmm. under takes a job somewhere else. Gotcha. Then you can go, you can move freely. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Every move after that cost you a year of eligibility. Ooh. And that would Ooh. stop, that would put the brakes on it yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. I watched a kid go from, this will probably be either his fourth or fifth school. He's going to Utah this year mm-hmm. as a receiver. Started, I think, at Oregon. Went to Florida State. And there's a school in between there, and then now he's made his way back to the to the north, the great northwest. But um, it's just... It, to me, it's you. You cannot live like this, right? Because you can't build rosters if you're a coach. Yeah. Forget NIL; they'll get some some handle on that at some point. But it's the transfer where you've got states lining up and passing legislation to allow yep. this to happen. <laughs> and it is is obviously people that haven't played or coached the game that that's behind it that wants want the freedom of that type of movement but it's not good for it's not good for the game i mean nor are we teaching kids how to be competitive because if you don't win a job as a freshman oh i'm going to transfer if i and and all you're doing is watering it down the more that you move how many where do you call home right at the end that where's this kid i'm talking i'll leave him what will he claim nameless yeah yeah now he's got a brother in the nfl by the way and uh where does he call home at the end of this journey The last place he I, was. I know I can go home to U of H yep. at the end of the day. Which is important, isn't it? It's important at the and end. But the they don't of think life. that way. Parents yeah. don't think that way. No. Yeah. It's what they can get. I, I've talked to a couple of college coaches, and the very first thing that they now ask, it's not, hey, how much my money? kid getting playing time? Is, you know, what's my kid going to take academically? They walk in, and it is, how much money? What's yeah. the money? And some schools are just like, well, I yeah, mean, if you're seeing sorry, an you're academic, prof- if you're seeing a professor on a visit, yeah, that's just to check a box. Well, then, these yeah. days, you're being I recruited mean, in how, the how many days. times have you heard in the last year, year and a half, have you heard the term student athlete? Uh, not much. It's a thing of the past, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So I that concerns up, but... me about where did APR go? Yeah. No. Oh, <laughs> how important was that? That got napalm a few years ago. Point. I mean, it's gone now yeah. because right. you can't possibly track it with all the movement. Mark. Right. Uh, I would do the same thing. I would restrict the portal movement somehow. Mm -hmm. And I feel like 
well, now the schools are going to be allowed to pay players. Yep. I always thought the money should flow in from the revenue that the programs get from the sports, right? So Dave Doran had an idea with that. We did, we had NC State last year, and his idea was that you pay the players from stadium um Stadium. Revenue, yeah. okay. So, however many fans that you have, I think that's where we'll go. I think that's where it may go as well. But it's it will come from a pot generated by mm -hmm. by fans in the seats. What? So, what do you do about the other sports? Because they're not making money, yeah. right? That, and that football, may be, that may be one football of those gravy where, train has been going for a long yeah. time. And what about basketball? Long because I, you know, you might have a hot shot point guard who plays for Seton Hall, but they draw maybe three thousand a game, if that. Unfortunately. Everything else takes a seat to football right now. Yeah. Because that's where the but biggest share problem. of money is mm -hmm. coming from, but from TV, TV yep. contracts. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's not nearly as much on a TV contract for basketball with these conferences right, as right. there are for football. Well, I, then you have the women's basketball teams who are saying, hey, you know, look you at our soccer, ratings. soccer, you got softball, you got everything yeah. that yeah. you've got to figure out a way to be fair. 80 in this. team super league. Football, that was going to be mine. men's and women's basketball, and cut it off there. Handle baseball, softball differently. Just cut it off there. U of there. H in that 80? Then I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they are <laughs> in that 80. 80. Yeah, they're I think in they're in the 80. I think I, they're in my, it as Mine well. would be. Oh, I mean, just, look, just put the four power conferences together. How many How many teams do you have there? Well, you have almost 80 now. You're, you're, you're yeah. going to get you're close. There. Yeah. You're getting close. And I mine, think that's the right. 64. Yeah. And mine would be along change. those, uh, kind of putting, the, putting that together is – They've got to, football's got to break away. Football's got to break away from the NCAA. They just have to have their own way of doing it because the numbers don't match up Title IX wise. Nothing matches up. Football's got to move away and be kind of its own entity. Then it sets up the 80 or 60 or 40, whatever. Set it up like Premier League soccer. Do that, but oh, football's got to break away. Relegation would be awesome. Yeah, relegation football has its own, its own kind of its own management and commissioner or whatever, yes, and then absolutely. you still allow the NCAA to control mm -hmm. the the, uh, the basketball tournament, you which they've it. done a fine job of. Yep. Do the football players have to? Did be I just say that? The I gave the NCAA a compliment. You well, did. with the basketball yeah. situation, well, they've I am made worried a lot about you. You okay? Yeah, I know it. Right. Yeah. I, saw, made... I read last night some. There was a group. Uh, oh, NC State. Their national championship yeah, team so, filing yeah, yeah, for yeah. Uh, a lawsuit for NIL because of how much the NCAA has used uh, that team in its videos and storytelling and so on and Man, so forth. Man, your NIL number at Houston in mm. the late 80s would have been sick. Mm. Would have been I nice. Mean, I remember ridiculous. we had a T-shirt, Where's the Heisman? And we couldn't use W-A-R-E oh. to sell the shirts. We had to, <sighs> to come back. Re they reprinted, and it was W-H-E-R-E. Oh, Where but it that? sounds right. It just didn't. It would have looked so cool in print. Right. Oh my gosh. Couldn't do. Couldn't, couldn't do use it. it though. No. Well, now you just go ahead and give you a could portion do it of now. The proceeds. Just and go to a TV. Uh, I mean, a uh, T-shirt dealer mm -hmm. and do own. it and split the proceeds with the school and and go on. Well, the rest of it, I'd give to my uh, my foundation. What shocked me about the Johnny Manziel documentary. What everyone jumped on this, they could have had him stay another year for three million, yeah. and they weren't even discussing the fact that this is pre nil. This is just like people were saying, just pay him the money. I'm thinking, <laughs> just pay him the money. This was how about totally the half illicit. a game suspension when he yeah, did exactly. get busted? That, that's that, the that's the funny part. Ha against Rice, yeah, come right. give me a break, guys. Come half on, half game suspension. <laughs> if it wasn't a And M and it wasn't Manziel at that time, being the hot, you know, the lightning rod of college football so to speak anybody else would have been hung from their shoelaces well the, sh the shame of it was two years later if you remember this todd Gurley, 2014 that's right Gurley was killing it he ended up missing games yeah by the end of the season yep. now for a running back he'd probably already done really what he needed to do at georgia but still he yeah. missed missed games at the end of the season for stuff like that that's awful and i think that's why people are uh so have strong opinions about the NCAA because there was never a fair penalty handed down from school to school. There was never really a right way to do it or mm -hmm. a scale, sliding yeah. scale, so to speak. It was just like it, it slid too much. I've got one more for you. By the way, what was your nickname for Rice? Andy's Crispy. <laughs> the Crispies. The Crispies. Andy's not here. It's okay. Andy, don't, don't watch this. Dre, I got one more for you. High school sports. 
you played them at the highest level, really enjoyed them. Dickinson, I was down at your stadium because my yeah. kid had a track meet there. It was very yeah. cool to see, and, and you're honored there and everything. So high school sports, you have a son who's really good at baseball and basketball, and he plays on these select teams. Are we headed for high school sports already, it feels like, in basketball? The basketball coaches just don't have the power they used to as far as where these kids might end up and everything. Mm -hmm. It's the AAU stuff, right? right? I mean, how is all that working right now? I know football's different, but especially in basketball, maybe baseball, I don't know. You tell me. Oh, it's, How's it's that already going? some states already have uh, legislation in the process of, of uh, awarding NIL to high school athletes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what we have to look forward to next. Oh, good. And, uh, <sighs> You yeah, know, Florida coaches don't that. have to worry about if you're recruiting my kid for a high school or a mm -hmm. co college, it ain't gonna be because you you know we're trying to leverage you to right. the highest bidder. You want the best uh, situation. I want you to know that <laughs> hey, he is going there. He's gonna be there, and uh, I just had him stick it out on a team that I probably should have moved him off of mm -hmm. in two weeks into it on a baseball team. Mm -hmm. But it's neither here nor there. You try to teach your kids uh, life lessons, and that'll stick with you. Commitment. Things right. of that sort. You make a decision. You stick with it. Um, I probably he probably would be in a better state of mind had I moved him, uh, and I probably should have looking mm -hmm. back uh, because I think it uh, it played with his love of the game a little bit. Oh, that's and all. when you start yeah. getting into that. Yeah. Um, it's a long story. I'll tell you guys off air. But uh, are you still a proponent of play multiple sports? <clears throat> Absolutely, yes. without because a doubt. It, one helps the other. I mean, without you, you can never get too much of uh, hand and eye coordination type stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think one helps the other. Uh, different movements help uh, the other. I think playing football to come back to basketball uh, develops toughness, mm -hmm. and you see it in certain kids. I see it in certain kids that I coach. Right. Um, and not for everyone, but certainly some. OK. And, and I think that's you definitely keep them in as many sports as they want to play for as long as they want to do it. And then there's plenty of time at uh, by your sophomore, junior, senior years in high school to specialize in one. I don't think kids are going to play three sports anymore. I know like I did. But that was way back. Yeah, I think I day. played four. I would run a track yeah. meeting and pitch that night. Right. <laughs> wow. But, but play two. Play two of them. Play yeah. football, baseball. And that's along basketball, basketball and baseball. Yeah. Jeez. That's a lot. So, well, yeah, you my letter, ja letter jacket at home, uh, at, at, well, at my mom's, I've got four sports on yeah. there. Track, I don't think you're going to have it. Basketball and football. Does it still fit? No. No. <laughs> I can't even get into one from U of H, let alone the one in high school. Okay. So forget about that. Yeah, but you look good. It's fine. <laughs> All right, Trey. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us. Thank you guys. Man, I enjoyed it. We got to do more of this. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. It's, Absolutely. It's good stuff.